Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar on Introduction to BIM 360 Platform. I'm Alyssa Jairus, and I'm a BIM specialist um, in the AEC Bold space at Baker Baines. So who is Baker Baines, if you're not sure? Uh, just quickly, Baker Baines, we're one of uh, the gold partners, we're a reseller of Autodesk, and we have uh, a, a couple of other services that we do offer. We do have a training center and offer things like CAD learning, and um, also have uh, Adobe uh, plugins for um, your CAD designs. So we believe in designing a better world and delivering a better uh, project or product and also in technological adoption for you to produce better results. And let's just go through our agenda today. Right. So our agenda today is to go through an overview of BIM 360 platform. A lot of people are very aware of docs and design, but what else is there in the um, kind of overall package of BIM 360 and what does that mean? What are the differences between the different packages and the functions of that to choose appropriately which one kind of applies to you? And what are the benefits of uh, something like BIM 360? We'll also go through uh, BIM 360 management, so things like user roles and responsibilities, and also activation, because I'm uh, aware that there are problems with uh, people activating their account or how to do how to do that. We will there then go through uh, basic navigation through through the, the BIM 360 portal to understand where to and how to add members and kind of switch through projects and things like that. Okay, so let's go through an overview of uh, uh, BIM 360. Um, so BIM 360 currently compromises of uh, um, BIM docs, so it's the first one, which is more for controlled information, um, kind of storing your information and kind of managing your documentation processes. Um, and a little bit more than that, um, version control and things like that and we'll break that down a little bit more in a bit there's also bim 360 design which is more for collaboration uh, between either the project team or your team members depending on uh, where they're situated or if it's a little bit easier uh, kind of cutting away the time uh, lapse between uh, sending information to and from team members um, then there's bim 360 glue and if anybody's kind of uh, aware or kind of familiar with uh, Navisworks, then it's kind of a Navisworks on, on the cloud, if I might, more for coordination purposes between services uh, in the build space. And the last one there is BIM 360 uh, build, which is more for kind of management on site. Uh, things like uh, kind of managing site uh, uh, snag lists and uh, other project management information that one might use on site uh, just to help keep track of things like RFIs and other information that uh, would be required. So let's just click done there and I'm just going to click through. So the first one there, I might just go back, is BIM 360 design. Uh, that's for collaboration or if I might say cloud work sharing, if anybody's very, very familiar uh, with cloud or, or with work sharing rather. So it's a basic work sharing, but that now is taken to the cloud. So that helps for uh, eliminating that that server issue where you have to have a, a central server, rather now it's kind of in the cloud and then you can uh, collaborate in that regard with engineers and so on, uh, or the architecture space if you're an engineer. If I might just, okay, so then we have a uh, BIM docs, so that's document management. And as I said, coordination for BIM glue. And I'm just gonna click one more. Right. So, so basically, how it how it's built is everything is based on BIM docs. So BIM docs, and I know before there was BIM uh, 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 BIM 360 team and a whole bunch of other things. They kind of uh, did away with that, or kind of that is for the older versions of Revit and so on. Now it's 
going forward from kind of Revit 2018, I think it is 0.3, and newer versions of Revit, we're going to be using BIM uh, 360 design, and that's based on the platform of BIM, uh, BIM Docs. So BIM Docs kind of holds these uh, things together. If you have a license for BIM 360 design or glue or build, you would uh, uh, automatically have um, the BIM Docs function in there. Alternatively, if you wanted to kind of just have the BIM Docs function, that is a separate entity without the rest of the, the BIM 360 packages, then you're welcome to have um, or, or purchase a license with, for just that um, BIM uh, 360 Docs. Now that's dependent on what you basically need this for in your project going forward. Okay, so I might so let's take a little bit of a look in BIM 360 docs. What does it compromise us? So there is things like version control. So if we know the problem with, uh, you know, contractors on site not knowing um, what what's the latest revision of the of the um, sheet or, or information that was submitted to site, um, having that problem version control ensures that at any moment uh, that update updated version is uh, kind of uploaded to the site of BIM360 Docs and, and the contractor or whoever it might be, not just a contractor, can go online and actually um, download or get the information from the latest version. So that's version control. Um, then we have things like submittal tracking, so tracking submissions and things like that, and someone can't come back to you and you know the, the problem that always poses itself uh, uh, where people say, I haven't received your information. Now it's kind of checked online, so uh, and there's an email notification that would go out to that uh, person, depending who it is in your, on your project team, and uh, that helps you check whether somebody has uh, uh, been sent or uh, received certain uh, information. Things like publishing drawings, you can do that straight from, from Revit if you're a Revit user, uh, publish drawings straight to Boom Docs, and it works really well with Revit, so it picks up things like information um, on the title block and, 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 and the revisions from the title block in order to, to embed information, and that's, the, that's what you see there. Things like uh, mobile access, so obviously uh, we moving to the era of you know, um, not having a pen and a paper kind of <laughs> recycle. You want to be kind of green friendly, if I might say. Um, so we're moving towards the, the, the era where you no longer have to take a million pieces of uh, paper uh, on site to, to, to help you uh, kind of track information. Mobile access helps you quickly download and, and retrieve information without having to print it at any moment. So you could get it from your phone or your tablet or whatever it might be just by logging into your account and, and, and retrieving that information. So that works together with marking up drawings. And if you have uh, kind of uh, one of those electronic pens with your um, iPad, you could uh, mark up drawings straight onto the sheet at any time. You could be at a coffee shop doing that information without having to print out big uh, uh, sheets of paper. Uh, so it's trying to become a little bit more uh, user friendly in that regard. So we can create issues as well. So creating issues to be submitted to say, uh, I need this information uh, from this person and you can kind of assign that issue to a consultant or an architect or whoever it might be in your project in your project team and boom docs also supports 2d and 3d information that helps with viewing kind of your model kind of like an a360 vibe if anybody's familiar with a360 so actually um, being able to to look at information in 3d aspect and and in a very 2d form so that would be your BIM 360 docs. Okay, very basic on the on the information with document management. Okay, so when it comes to BIM 360 design, what does that mean? Okay, this also has issue tracking, okay? A different type of issue tracking, more for the 3D, 3D modeling side, if I might, may say, okay? And when you send that 3D model, model information to whoever it might be in your, in your, um, your project team. Uh, things like collaborating, and I'm sure that's a big one for, for, 
a lot of people. Uh, you might have, uh, w even if it's within your company, you have, might have companies stretched out across uh, SA or in a different country completely. Uh, that's where Boom360 Design would come in uh, so that you could save your kind of Revit model on the cloud and uh, collaborate or work share uh, that model with uh, people in different locations. But it doesn't actually only stop there. You could also do a work sharing across your project team. So different consultants, uh, depending who it is, you guys can almost uh, share platform for information. And that kind of rules out uh, Dropbox or, or other uh, platforms that, that actually we used to use uh, before before BIM 360, uh, but we often would know that there is a time delay between the information that's uploaded and also you know the changes that are made throughout the month or the week or the days thereafter. So this kind of um, cuts out that delay in time across receiving information. So you kind of can receive information a little bit more quicker. Uh, milestone tracking would be the different milestones in your in your project uh, phases. Um, there's a whole lot of insights and analytics uh, that come with with the project, and we'll we'll kind of just uh, skim through that as well. Um, deliverable exchange and change visual visualization. So it's a little bit different than the old platform if you have been using BIM 360 team before. And I'm sure it must have been a big shock to to you if you suddenly from team uh, went and tried to work on design. It is a little bit different in how things. Uh, and how you navigate through your projects and things like that. So we will go through it. Um, if I might quickly look at this. All right, so basically the, the idea of how the work sharing would work is um, project teams can kind of, and their structural team, and obviously we'll have a little bit more than that, but project teams can kind of package and share information from, from one consultant to another. And thereafter the, the consultant uh, if it's our architectural, sending it to maybe the structural team. Structural team can review and consume that information. So they'll review the information, and if they need any more changes, mark those up and send that back to the architectural team. So everything is done on this platform, though. So, so same thing. Uh, structural team will then package and share that information on a shared project data folder. And then the architectural team can then review and consume that. And, and, and this platform is not built for Revit and uh, for the processes of Autodesk and their software. So it works well with this um, system. So I might just click next. So some of, some of the benefits there would be a single source of truth. So um, gone are the days where you know, you're know you emailing and then you're uh, uploading Dropbox or any other uh, or SharePoint and things like that, platforms that are not necessarily built for the files that we're trying to transfer. And also, you know, there's different systems of controlling and managing uh, documentation. So we're kind of just moving this into one platform and ha having a single source of truth where everything is kind of checked and recorded onto this. There's controlled work sharing across teams. Okay, we've discussed that. So that would obviously mean faster and more efficient uh, collaboration process. Uh, that would reduce internal server and IT costs. Obviously, that comes down to having a server um, uh, in your office. And if you want to kind of eliminate that, then Boom360 would kind of act as your server in, in the place that you store all of your information when it comes to your, your, your models and your projects. Uh, deliverable co coordination, that would go together with Glue. So that would be Boom360 Glue. So you're going to reduce rework and trackable uh, project activity and file version history. And file version history is a big a big one there. You can still track your file versions in, in Boom360, kind of uh, looking at the older revisions as compared to the newer ones and having that history kind of stored um, on this, uh, in this platform. You might have known that. Uh, when when doing a lot of work and, and submitting a whole bunch of revisions, if you aren't archiving that on your desktop or your server currently, it's often difficult to kind of track back, you know, what was this revision, what was it for. Uh, so this will help you kind of manage that. You could just go on there and, and check the version file history. Um, perform design review with stakeholders. 
So obviously, it, it, it things like mockups and things like that. It's easier to do kind of design reviews because this platform now is easy easier for people to kind of view the model and view the submitted sheets or construction drawings that you might have. Streamline connection to pre-construction -constru uh, workflows. That is just highlighting, uh, you know, the different BIM 360 packages across the workflow of a de design process or a construction process from design to actually being built on site. So this uh, BIM 360, there's different platforms that would fall in those different phases of the life cycle of the building. Um, access your project information anytime and anywhere that comes back to mobility and being able to just pick up a uh, whether it's an ipad or your phone and quickly just access information without having your pc there or your laptop right so let's continue so bim 360 glue um the two popular bim 360 packages were the first two that we've seen and um Glue is a little bit uh, less common, commonly used, and um, we should be really heading towards this in the future, hopefully. So BIM 60 would be uh, tash detection. So again, highlighting the Navisworks uh, uh, functionality of it. So having your your consultants and their models, you know, having all those models put together and doing a tash detection now um, through the cloud. So Essentially, model navigation, so you can navigate through through the whole model in a 3D view, obviously. Trade coordination, constructability review. Again, that works with Navisworks, if you know the constructability uh, review in Navisworks. Round trip coordination and version control, again, as usual. So very much like a Navisworks, if you're very familiar with it. If you're not familiar with it, welcome to uh, download and Navis works give it a try with the trial see if it works for you um, this is kind of the future of coordinating um, on the cloud let's click next um, the next one there is bun 360 bold okay this is more for on-site information so things like issue management for on sites uh, again submittal tracking things like rfi tracking okay request for information uh, for, for site information, and this would be a contractor's best friend. Um, things like quality control, having quality control lists on uh, this BIM 360 platform. And what's really amazing about this is then I could just take photos and assign it and attach it to certain areas uh, pinpointed on different floor plans and completely on the cloud. So it's easier way if, if anybody's done snagging before, instead of going to the site with a kind of pen, paper and camera, and you know, you're struggling around trying to, trying to, um, trying to uh, do your snag list, it's better if it's maybe it's on cloud and everything is digital and you would, it would be a lot easier to have this recorded on, on your uh, quality control lists online. Uh, then on a paper that you might use. Okay, and that and also comes down to safety management and things like, and that's kind of uh, uh, kind of growing a lot more if you check uh, a lot of stuff online. Uh, overseas is a good example. There's a lot of things going on with the safety management side. Daily reporting of tasks and so on. So it's more the, the management side of a uh, site and, and what's going on there. If I can click next, so BIM 360 management, let's go through some user roles and activation and, navig and, and basic navigation of the site. So I click next. Okay, so what is the difference, and it was a big question is why that I decided to, to talk about this, is what's the difference between an account administrator and a project administration? Um, so essentially, when you get projects and in, in, uh, in uh, BIM 360, you have an account admin and a project admin. Often, the the account admin, which uh, uh, initially is the contract manager off of the company or the license or the account, um, he he or she would uh, uh, receive a activation message to activate the account. So thereafter, they're able to create projects and activate different services. 
Um, they can add or remove members and assign project admins to different projects. Assigning, they can also assign a, additional account admins so they're not the only account admin on there. Um, the project admin thereafter would only be able to add and remove members to a project and set permissions of uh, visibility and have access control um, and adjust project details. All right, so that's the main two differences. And obviously you then get a, 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 a general user that uh, would have limited functions and be able to kind of just collaborate or upload information and the basic kind of uh, usability of, of the, the Vim360 site. So how would we proceed with activation? Um, in case it's a bit confusing, I just quickly got a few slides on this to uh, um, take you through. So step one, after you your Bum360 subscription is activated, the account admin receives an email with the Get Started link. And this is often kind of overlooked if anybody knows how we usually just uh, don't even read emails. So you need to watch out for the activation uh, email and get started link. So you want to click on the activate your account thereafter. So there again, click on the activate button to launch the account admin portal. And here it's going to ask you to kind of sign in using your Autodesk account details. If anybody's very familiar with that. So a lot of the time, the licensing that you have on your software is linked back to your Autodesk account. And essentially, you might have this, or if you don't have one, you would have to click on create an account to create a new one. And if you do have one, you would just put in your, your user information and your password. Okay, so most probably your, your email and your password. Thereafter, you can sign in to Boom360 account using the following link. Okay, so I'm just going to click on that, get that open. And I'm just going to switch our screen. I can quickly get that again. All right. Okay, so we would be open to a screen like this where you could create an account to sign in. So I have an ID and a email address so I can sign in. Okay, and my password's there, so I can just click on sign in. All right, so it's taken me to the project directory with the list of projects, and there's a bunch of random things in here. So essentially, this is kind of the overall interface of the new platform that's going forward. Um, it was confusing at the start uh, with people often phoning in, uh, very confused about, about what's going on. Uh, but essentially, uh, what, what, it, what it's doing is there's a bunch of projects in here. It's going to give you overall information about how many members are in that project, okay, and how many companies are in those. Whether it's active or not, and the last time that we signed in. Okay, this filter here is just giving me an overall indication of the status that's going on. But at the top, you could see a couple of things. So you can see that, that we're in the Baker Baines um, um, account, essentially, right? And there's account admin, project directory, and I could click on add in more projects on here, okay? If I click to add, it's going to ask me for things like project name and a lot of project information and what the project type is. Okay, so a lot of information that you would require in your project. So let's cancel out of that. Okay, right at the top, we could see a bunch of things. And I'm going to come back to that. And obviously, we also have my user account um, name or icon there. And a little helpful hint there if I can click that. It's going to, if you get a bit lost, you could click on the little uh, question mark. And there's a learn panel, which essentially helps you set up your project if you're not sure. So I haven't really went through any of these here. But I mean, you are welcome to go through each of these in case you get lost, right? Okay, so we have projects that we went through and then we're adding uh, a couple of projects. So members, if I just click on the next 
the next icon there. Members is your member directory, which includes all the members that are added to uh, all of the accounts, or all the projects, sorry. Okay, and I could click to add more and invite, if I wanted an account admin, I could invite those people. We can also import the members by spreadsheet to just have a list. It, it, I might have a lot more than this, so we could uh, kind of do that. Oh, sorry, just go back. So the next one there is company. Okay, this would give me a list of the different companies that I would have and the overall members that would be uh, part of each and the projects created by either. And I could carry on adding um, and inviting a bunch of other companies. Right. Right. So we're still kind of in the overall page with the projects and this and that. We haven't essentially went into a project file yet or into a project folder, if I might. Analytics was going to tell you things like the project kind of the overall project information, how many are active um, and things like that, activated projects, how many um, uh, uh, project uh, partners there are or companies there are. So very overall information about all of the, the projects put together. Settings thereafter um, would look different for each. Uh, I have a little bit of admin rights. So I would have a little bit more information. So things like profile and us changing the, the account display name of your admin, changing things like what is the, the, the project or company uh, logo, if I might. Business units would be more information about the organization. So it really comes down to the settings of the profile of the, of the account. Uh, admin uh, activities you would see here is a lot of who has done what, what what's going on, who's been uh, kind of uh, deleting projects, anything like that. Let's hope that nobody's doing that. Um, so that's the kind of basic overview off of the projects itself. So how do I go and switch between projects other than just clicking them in here? I might want to cast my attention to the top there where it says uh, the company name. And I could click on the, the little drop down arrow in there and that's going to help me switch between different projects. So if I might click on that project there, you see, Okay, now this is in the project itself, and I can just confirm by saying that this is on training 01. And essentially what I could do is you can see that there's members in here on the first page, and I could see that the role of this person is so-and-so, and essentially I could change that in case uh, it was a little bit different. And we have our civil engineer here, so we could click on that and change that, or add more people and specify the role that they play on this uh, project. Um, again, it gives you status like is it active account or not, and the email and the company that, that they're from. So companies would be essentially the different companies in this project only. Services would be what kind of services are activated on my account. Currently, I only have uh, docs uh, activated on my account. I'll have to go and activate design collaboration if I wanted to collaborate uh, for um, um, on the BIM 360 design. And then we have the profile again in here, but the profile of the, the training project, or so, so I say the training project, okay? So I can type in things like the project address and fill in the information about the project in here. So it's fairly simple, okay, fairly simple. What in case I want a little bit more information? So there's a little drop down there. The little square at the on the in the corner there, and what this is telling me is I can switch between a couple of things. So you can see notably insight. Okay, insight is a, one of the the pages that I just want to jump to quickly. What insight is is a page of the for the project that uh, you can customize and keep information on here. And what that means is I could click, so there's a bunch of information. You can see that there's design issue status and it tells me that there's uh, one issue that's open and it gives me design issues by company, if any, and design uh, issue trend uh, going throughout the, the life cycle of the, the project. Um, essentially, if I might, if I want to customize, I can click on customize. 
uh, customizing the insights board and this is uh, for, for my account so I can click on uh, card library and what that brings up for me is things like what else do I want to see on this project insight board I might want to see things like issues so uh, tracking documentation issues design issue trend I think that one's kind of on there but things like project address or weather and you know general things like that that you might want to see so you can customize this and add the card in there so let's add in project address although there's there's not really anything um, identified on there but you could see that they just popped that in there on the at the bottom if I might okay I haven't saved my changes let's just cancel and save them okay so I'm just clicking save on the top there so that it saves it perfect okay so I'm clicking on reports All right and here we could find and try to find and track reports that might have been going throughout um, this project. Okay, currently there's nothing in here, but I could I could search by um, who's created the report and or when it's been created and what type of report it is. Okay, that comes down to document management. So that was insight, but if I click on, so I'm still on the project training one. I can click on document management and this is where the docs but uh, plays a big role so things like the different folders okay so what what you see here is the management system or the storage system of different um, uh, uh, documents so what they've done here on the side is I could right click and add subfolders or add a whole bunch of folders under different uh, uh, different sets of information and add in under each uh, folder upload different types of documentation and keep track of the version and you could see a whole bunch of other information that's kind of attached to this okay so you would uh, you would obviously have a project directory in here that you kind of uh, configure and obviously you'll probably have to speak to your team or whoever it might be on how do you want to go about setting this up to have a proper template and not just have your folders and, and information scattered uh, around the place um, essentially there's also so that's folders and then there's reviews so if there were any kind of documentation reviews you would find these issued to me on here or essentially if there were any issues that were assigned to me um, things like if they were requesting information about anything, you would find that here and you would see who it's assigned to and uh, the company and the date due uh, for that. Okay, so I hope this kind of gives you a better information uh, or a better understanding of, of the navigation process between switching to, through projects and kind of where everything is situated. Okay, clicking on Project Home is just going to bring me to back to the home page of, of training or one uh, folder or project and on which I could see a whole bunch of information and customize again the information that I might see here. All right, let me just quickly switch my screen. Okay, so quick summary and conclusion. Um, so we went through the basic 360 packages, docs, design, view, and build. Docs was for document management. Design was for work collaboration. Um, glue was for coordination. And build was for uh, management of uh, on-site processes and project management. So we went through the different uses and each pa package and the benefits of design. Uh, we also thereafter went um, on to discussing the different roles and responsibilities and how to go about activation and logging on to the website. Um, we then went through kind of navigating the new interface and how to switch through projects and very basic navigation throughout the account. Um, um, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, Please pose them now. If you require any more information, please email me if you require any kind of um, workshops or further webinars on specific uh, BIM 360 platforms that you might want to see. 
um, or if you need help on how to kind of set uh, help your your project set up or licensing uh, please email me or contact us otherwise I'll just wait for questions and if there aren't any questions we'll we'll just stop there if you want to see other uh, in-depth Boom360 topics, please do email me and let us know uh, what would you prefer a, a webinar on. So I'll just wait. I'll give you guys a minute or two for any questions that you might have. I hope it kind of made things a little bit clearer for the different kind of Boom360 packages and what uh, each of those would be used for. If you need more information, please email me. So I don't see any questions coming up. So I'm going to stop it there. Um, I do. Okay, I do see something from Sarah. Uh, who's just uh, 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 requiring pricing and you're welcome to email me. That's totally fine. Um, again, if anybody else needs kind of licensing information, please um, let me know by uh, sending me an email or contacting our um, um, company. Or if you just need advice of what to use for your project team, you're welcome to just contact us and just find out. Um, that's totally fine as well. Thanks, Sarah, for, for letting me know. Uh, otherwise, we'll stop there. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your Friday. Uh, we'll see you next time.